Hello and welcome to the Amigo Show. I'm Jo Borman Trot and this is one of the series of the Stuck episodes all about what's happening in lockdown. And these are all my friends and sometimes neighbours who are going through lockdown with us and hopefully got something to share today and something that I hopefully give you a bit of inspiration or just something to think about right now in this weird time of being stuck which is what the name of the series is so i'm thrilled to announce and uh, introduce you to rory kecklin jones he's opposite me yes did i get it right you did <laughs> i got it wrong earlier um who actually is a neighbor of mine so we, we can wave to each other actually hi <laughs> oh thanks for coming on my show rory you're very welcome actually i'm waving out of the back window i'm in the loft in oh, what was a teenage bedroom um but it's lovely i can see into all I can see into the neighbors gardens oh of course i'll give you, I'll give you a full report of what they're up to <laughs> i'm glad i live on your the front then i just yeah. you know gosh the things that go on in my back garden <laughs> <laughs> oh and how do so we look after your dog cabbage don't we which is kind of you know a joy because your, your dog is just a delight and she's called cabbage and she's just a sweetheart and she's a dog that everyone needs a dog during lockdown if you ask me so we there are three of us at home at the moment um and we each take her out once a day um and i i'm on the early shift which i like i'm up every morning quite early usually before seven out with the dog and then i'm inside the rest of the day but it's a good yeah. start for the day yeah, and they're actually an excuse, aren't they? I, I, I coaxed my dog to go out with me. She gets fed up with it. It's like, no, it's like, come on. Otherwise, yeah. it doesn't look so good. It looks like I'm just going out for another walk. Mm, yeah. So what's happening with you with lockdown right now, Rory? So, um, I, you know, you, you said you're writing, is that right? Well, I've been in lockdown for probably a, a week longer than lots of people because um, I was in a, I'm in a category, not a severe category, but with an under, some kind of underlying condition, which said that you should start social distancing about a week before everyone went into lockdown. So I've been here. I mean, uh, what I'm doing is working. I'm, I'm doing my uh, job Monday to Friday for the BBC, uh, doing a lot of radio. I do a weekly radio program, uh, done a certain amount of television from right here with um, I stick my iPhone into this tripod and um, broadcast to the nation. Um, so I'm getting on with it. I'm also trying to write a book. And you'd think lockdown was an ideal time to write a book, but I am pretty distracted. So like, I'm, what I'm supposed to be doing right now is writing this book. And instead, I'm talking to you. You're to me. You're chatting to me. Sorry about that. Yeah, because Rory, you, you are rather busy as a BBC journalist and your technology is your is your bag, isn't it? That's your specific yeah. field. Um, so what's happening right now in that field? You're, it sounds like you're busier than ever working from home. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I mean, there there's a, a, a lot of looking at social media. Social media, which is great in some ways, has been terrible in others. There's, I've been doing a lot about... Uh, the uh, attempt to stop fake news spreading across social media about the virus and particularly these batty 5G conspiracy theorists mm -hmm. who, you know, are causing a lot of trouble. So we're doing a lot about that, but also, you know, the, the good things about technology, which is that uh, I wrote a piece the other day about how much worse this would have all been before we had smartphones and social media. Uh, would have been stuck with very little way of communicating. So uh, there's all sorts of interesting things to say about technology at the moment, and that's keeping us quite busy. I'm glad it's being used for that that very important thing, security and fake news, because there's so much fit around, isn't there, at the moment? And it's 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 passing faster than ever. It's being zoomed around, isn't it? Because people are just on their screens so much more right now. Yeah, and people. I mean, at some of the most dangerous places for for fake news are things like WhatsApp, because you can't quite see from the outside what's going on on WhatsApp, but people trust it and things go around WhatsApp, you know, oh, a friend told me and it arrives by WhatsApp and people think, oh, that's a friend of mine. And I don't know where they've got it from, but they're probably right. And it gives it a, a lot of power. So, you know, a lot of lessons to be learned from this about, you know, basic checking of what's going on making sure that your your source is trusted that the facts are facts and not just kind of crazy stuff that's made up by people 
and before you share it to another group so just yeah. to double check in with it isn't it and think well actually where has this come from and does it feel right i think with a lot of this we feel with our gut and think actually it doesn't feel right this piece of information mm. and then stop yourself from sharing it really i suppose yeah i mean they've made it a bit harder to share things on whatsapp you have to do it one at a time now but but people still do and people you know um they don't stop to think it's, it's the thing is it's the great thing about it is it's so easy and the terrible thing about it is it's so easy <laughs> you know you can just share stuff uh, you can be a news source at the click of a button yeah absolutely but on the positive side at least we can all keep in touch um, I mean, we could be hollering outside the window, obviously, but generally speaking, um, I've had interviews with people in Australia, in, in the US, and all just on my phone, on Zoom, just through an app, easy peasy, um, and which is great, isn't it, for people to keep running their businesses as well as broadcasting. Yeah, well, here's a great example. I do Pilates. I do a Pilates class every Saturday morning, a place down about a mile away, um, and it's gone online. And it's great online. I was talking to the teacher this morning, I was doing my class this morning, and she says she's got as many people now as, as she had in, in, in the real world a few weeks ago. Um, and in fact, I was on a waiting list for this morning's class, so many people signed up. So that is working really well. And then an hour later, uh, I had a piano lesson. I have a piano lesson every week. Oh, wow. And my, my piano teacher, who's not, is a lovely man, who's not very, tech friendly but has worked out how to use whatsapp so he whatsapp me brilliant yeah that's fantastic yeah. well you have to play louder rory because i can't hear you so you have to turn up the volume you can't hear me not when you're playing the piano no oh, when i play the piano oh i see yeah. you, have to you, turn up the volume. you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to hear my piano no oh, okay, okay. It's, turn it's, it down then. it's a Lower. hobby it's a hobby which i've been doing for many years never got any better but it's a it's therapy really very which, is, therapeutic. which yeah. is always good isn't it yeah i've, I've been doing a, some live um recording with my friend who plays guitar as well we've got a bit of a band going now um which is great because we can't hurt anyone because nobody can hear us apart from us each other <laughs> so that's really good um so i just wanted to mention your um your recent well was it a recent visit to the uh west middlesex hospital um and your incredible video which i've just watched um and i'm almost glad i didn't have breakfast first because I must admit, it's quite tough to watch. Um, so tell us about that. Your, uh... Yeah, well, that was actually the Hammersmith Hospital. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So I, about uh, just over a year ago, was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Uh, and I got quite involved in the Parkinson's charity, Parkinson's UK. And they invited me uh, uh, six weeks ago to go and see the Brain Bank at the Hammersmith Hospital which is where they do research into Parkinson's. It's absolutely vital. Parkinson's is a condition which is still pretty mysterious. Uh, it's incurable. Uh, they can give you uh, treatment to um, alleviate the symptoms, but they can't arrest it. So lots of vital research going on. And this, this brain bank is the key uh, weapon, really, in the research into finding out how Parkinson's works and therefore how you could maybe combat it. Um, and I, I did a film for BBC Breakfast, which was shown just before I got in just in time because, you know, A, we wouldn't have been able to film it a couple of days later and B, it would never have got on the telly because so much else is happening. Anyway, um, uh, the film was me uh, talking to the doctor who uh, does all this work and actually handling a human brain, which sounds pretty gruesome, but was amazingly um, impressive. He, this was a fantastic scientist, this doctor, and he, he really made you understand how important this research was. Uh, and it was all building up to me deciding whether or not to uh, leave my brain to, to, to this research effort, um, which, I, which I have done. Uh, and just a quick plug, I've got a piece which I've written, which is in the mail on Sunday, uh, this weekend so uh, you can read more about it there. Fantastic yeah because you, you, when were you diagnosed with Parkinson's? Uh, January last year and then mm. I sort of went to the public about it in the middle of the year. Yeah yeah well that's amazing and um, in fact I had a guest the other day Luke Murphitt he's 32 
Mm-hmm. Um, and he, so I will connect him um, with this video because obviously mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. He may know about the brain bank, but mm-hmm. I don't know. But it's incredible because there's only one, isn't there? It's just a very unique. One, one. Yeah, in in the UK, yeah, yeah, and mm-hmm. um, it's very separate from the the idea of you know lots of people know about uh, kidney donors and other organ donors, but this brain donation scheme is is very separate, and the, and they need more donors, and they're sort of appealing for more donors. Yeah, it's fantastic, and it's fascinating. So you're saying about it's all about the dopamine levels and. Where where you it sort of it happens it loses you lose that is that right? Yeah, what uh, what we know about Parkinson's is it's a deficiency of do- dopamine, which is the the substance which basically uh, controls your movements, and they can go inside the brain. They can never really diagnose it until after you're dead, and they look at the brain. But they they it's very evident in people who've had Parkinson's that the the dopamine cells are, are missing. A certain part of the brain um, uh, and the medication is all about basically throwing a bit more dopamine in there to sort of counteract the effects yeah fantastic well no please plug away because obviously the more awareness and um, and uh, the more people know about this and can support that research mm. um, the better so um, so yeah and um, just to finish off before we we go so mention your uh, show as well that you're doing so let's get that in while we're uh, while you're here I do a weekly radio program called tech tent uh, it goes out on the bbc world service uh, every friday afternoon at three but the easiest way to find it is it's a podcast as well so you just search for tech tent it's a roundup of the week's technology news and we did something quite fun uh yesterday we're going to do it in coming weeks we've been looking at things that people might want to do tech techie things people might want to do during lockdown and yesterday we had um, an item about teaching your kids coding um, and we had a young mum who happens to be my wife's niece talking <laughs> about her she's got two boys Ruben uh, and Jonah eight and five uh, and she got them into coding and um, explained how much fun they're having so I've also put a lot of um, links up on, on, the, on the, the program blog with lots of tips for uh, where you can go to to start coding and I think you know we're all stuck at home uh, kids getting a bit kind of climbing the walls uh, it might be a good time yeah fantastic sounds great and is that a separate podcast Roy for the show yeah it's called, the, the podcast is is just called Tech Tent um, but there's also a blog if, if you it was on the front page of the BBC website yesterday um, uh, if you search for Tech Tent uh, k- Kids Coding, you'll find okay. a blog about it and a list of resources for, for people wanting to get their kids into that. Brilliant. And people can re- read the Daily Mail tomorrow, on yeah. Sunday, that is, um, for, to read your article too. And uh, the, the big question for me is, are you going to be joining me for Dancing in the Street tonight? We will be out six to seven. Six till seven. Yeah, you need to put in your request because they're all mine at the moment, Roy. You'd be like this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just, just to, in case you wonder what that, what we're talking about, is we have um, we've got a great guy down the road who's got this incredible music collection, hasn't he? Jeff, Jeff, Jeff the get on the street. <laughs> yes. And he's been playing his music like at top volume on a Saturday night between six and seven. We all walk out our doors like um. Reminds me of that that little show where that little um sorry the old TV show that people used to pop out their doors and pop like <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, and we all come out and just do a bit of dancing in the street and talk from distances and it was nice it was nice last week yeah it was great the sun was shining yeah let, I don't I don't know what the weather forecast is it, it's it's not going to rain that's what it says it's not going to rain well I think I think the thing is really, I don't think fashion and kind of what we wear really matters not just you know even I'm saying that and I'm normally like <laughs> I do like to dress up the occasions uh, well this that I'm wearing we, my wife gave it me for my 30th wedding anniversary for our 30th wedding anniversary 10 days ago and I've hardly taken it off a uh, well scrappy <laughs> shirt um, and you know what's not to like exactly <laughs> exactly yeah, well, I guess there won't be too much rugby going on for a little while yet. But yeah. anyway, anyway, hopefully again soon. I know what, what's happening with the World Cup. Oh, gosh, I haven't even thought what they can do with that. Is it just? Well, no. What the 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 rugby was right. The final stages of the Six Nations. That's on hold. Everything's on hold. The Europe, yeah, yeah, Europe, well, European football championships have been postponed. 
we all, I guess, we're all I guess, desperate to get back to normal, aren't we? Yeah, we are. But I guess they just take it up again. Well, the Rugby World Cup, because I love going to the well, pub no, and watching. But, yeah, no, the Rugby World Cup's not due for another few years, because they had that last year. But um, all sorts of, you know, Wimbledon, uh, Glastonbury, um, the golf, the football, everything on hold. Um, so, you know, we, we'll wait and see. We will. We will indeed. Well, thank you for coming on my show. And uh, it's been it. such a pleasure. And Rory's on Twitter. You're quite vibrant on Twitter, aren't you? So yeah, that's I'm a good place. Matthew147. It's, it's a weird handle, but I've got um, quite an audience on Twitter. So follow me there. Yeah, you've got a few more than me. Like <laughs> a few thousand more, 100,000 more. <laughs> well, thanks for your time today. And I will see you out in the street later. And um, yeah. really appreciate you coming on the show. So. That was Rory Kathleen Jones. I'm Joe Ward and that was the Mejo Show.